Yes, this is me, about to send my army into battle with not just one boss, but three. And you're wondering how I got here. Well, let me show you. This is the beautiful map of Valgaro known for its gorgeous white cliff biome. And today, I'm going to take you through an epic 100 days adventure. Through these lands are in hardcore mode, which means if I die, I have to start all over again. So I ain't trying to die here today. This 100 days video is inspired by Luke the Notable and Zanny Zebra. And now it is time that I show you how this adventure all started. Uh, the first day as a survivor starts off with a small scratch of the arm and spawning in the wrong location. Yep. I did not want to spawn here, and I haven't spent that much time on this map, so it's kind of like a new experience for me, so I was a little bit lost. So we started off with the basics, collecting some resources like stone, wood, and thatch. Made myself a nice pick and hatchet to make harvesting a little bit better. I needed more fiber, but there was this dialer lurking around, so I had to hide in the bush because I had no way to defend myself. I made myself a few spears, but before we could go hunting, I spotted a Jaboa, and I just had to tame it. I named her Josie. I made myself a campfire. Now it's time to mark some dodos and make them go extinct. Wait, didn't we already do that? Am I in the wrong timeline here? What the hell's going on here? And mark that dialo from before. Then I built a little campsite with a foundation and a mortar and pistol to make just two narcotics. Yay, XP. Once I was level nine, I made myself some boulders and a boomerang as it's time to get our first rideable team. So I decided to check out the local parasaur population and to my surprise, there was a level 130. And I bowled it and started to attempt to knock it out with that boomerang, but it didn't go to plan. And she got out of the bowler and then I lost sight of it when I ran into a level 135 Dilo, which had its hungry eyes on me. But I had other plans for this Dilo. So I knocked him out and gave him some juicy meat, but there was a problem. Once he tamed, he was attacked by another Dilo. Must be mad that he joined forces with me. But he smacked that Dilo up. But then, a Trike and a Pego ganged up on my poor Dilo. And I really didn't think he was going to get through this. But, to my surprise, he managed to take them both down. So I called him Diff. Because he different. Then, I tamed a level 25 Parasol, which I called Pa. Yes, very original name here. Made him a saddle to end off that day. In the early hours of the second day, I spotted that 130 Parasol again. And... <clears throat> I was a little salty about that, to be honest. But once it was daylight, it was time to leave this little campsite and head on our way down the river. I checked the first moss shop I saw and he wanted fish prime meat. I didn't have that, you bloody greedy bugger. I checked another one and I wanted cooked prime meat. Alrighty, your highness. I did spot a skeletal bronto as I started recording this during the Fair of Old event, so there was some spooky stuff going around. Finally found a moss shop that I could tame and I named him Jerry. Oh, Jerry. I continued down the river until I spotted some raptors and aloes and decided it's time to cross the bloody river because I ain't stuffing with them. I found this nice area that was going to become home for a few days, but these compies weren't happy about it. But they don't really have much to say now. I made myself a little shack to house all my stuff in, then made myself a bow. But I didn't have any flint to make arrows, so I had to harvest up some rocks to get some. Made myself a nice storage box to store stuff that I didn't really want to carry around because it's kind of junk, but kind of useful. I don't know. Finally made myself some arrows, and then I spotted a level 135 Pteranodon, which I'm hoping I can tame in the future because that would be a nice, nice tame to have. Started to set up the camp walls with a gateway and some spike walls, which I actually never come back to doing. Then caught it a night by making some spark powder and narcotics for that sweet XP. The following day, I made myself a forge to smelt some metal I've collected to make some ingots. Then I made myself a smithy, and this means I'm finally able to upgrade my shitty stone tools to brand spanking new top of the line metal ones. Yippee! Then I was attacked by a thieving bloody seagull, which I had to eliminate from the Ark Census because stuff thin. I went and harvested myself some more metal before doing some duck shooting with the seagulls because we gotta really eliminate them from the census. But like damn, that was a good ass shot. Made myself a nice crossbow so I can eliminate them seagulls even more. Then I went hunting for that level 135 Tyranodon, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Instead, I knocked out this level 95 one. And once she was tamed, I called her Iris. Day four started off with me making a shiny brand new pike. And today's goal was to get to level 38 as quickly as I possibly can so I can make a saddle for Iris. This means making more narcotics as they seem to give stupid amounts of XP. Like narcotic XP just hits different. While I was waiting for that, I knew I was gonna need some keratin or chitin. So I went and attacked some turtles, which nearly ended in the death of Jerry which would have been sad. I, I don't want to lose Jerry. Jerry's the man. 
okay? But I did end up getting the right amount I needed for the saddle. Now I just needed to get the XP to level 38. So I made myself some wood foundations and even more narcotics to boost up my XP. And once we got to level 38, I made that sweet ass saddle for Iris and was able to take my maiden flight with her. Then we murked some dodos for some XP on her and went for a little explore of the land around me as I knew I wanted a base location that would be epic to build on. I did spot some metal nodes close by, so that's good, and also spotted my first lot of Denonicus, which got me thinking about getting myself one. So I landed on a rock close by and spotted a nest, which had an egg in it. And you know what I did? I went for it. I went for that bloody egg and I stole that egg without a hassle. But it was only level 20. Uh, a bit of a bummer, but it's the first of many that we are going to steal during these 100 days. So I headed back to base after that and placed that egg in the preserving bin just for safekeeping. The next day I decided that I was going to hatch that egg just so I had some extra defenses and I could run around on Denonicus because they are awesome. So I made myself 10 standing torches and placed them down in a semicircle and popped that egg in the middle but it was too damn cold for it so i had to make some more but before we do go ahead and hash this egg i went on a fly with iris to hopefully find some crystal as i needed myself a spyglass to check them levels and some soul traps i spotted some argies and close by there was some crystal yay so after harvesting some i was able to make a spyglass and some soul traps before i headed back to base and got to incubating that denonicus egg while i was waiting i tamed myself a lystra and quarter list gave her a nice pat for being a good girl i also made myself a saddle for the denonicus the egg finally hatched and it was a baby girl she is so goddamn cute so i gave her some meat and called her floof I managed to get a full imprint on her and she was fully grown by the end of the day. Went on a little murder spree with her to end off that night. Today was the day we head out and find my forever base spot for this hundred days. The base spot where we build something epic and breed up our army to beat the forsaken oasis on hopefully beta difficulty. So I soul trapped all my dinos except for Dift as he was going to be the campsite's defender. He was going to sit here and protect it. And now we headed out on Iris and I spotted this gorgeous waterfall and I followed it up. And just above this waterfall there was this spot was going to be it. This was the base spot on top of this hill. It was Perfect for the idea I had. So I landed at the end of the hill at this like little cliff intersection and started creating a crafting station where I will start to boot up this base location. I also went on a little meat run with Fluff where I was attacked by a pack of raptors which ended in my favor. When I was back at base I made an SS crafting station a forge but then I noticed something. It was a Rex walking straight towards me. No, no, no. We might have to abandon ship. We're gonna have to abandon ship getting there. We're abandoning ship. We're abandoning ship. <laughs> We're abandoning ship. <laughs> and I only had enough time to save myself by jumping on Iris and landing on the cliff above. And then it happened. The Rex killed Jerry. And then knocked Par off the mountain. Wait, he's gone distracted. I might be able to save Par. But I was lucky enough because of that, I was able to save him. Oh, 89 HP here. Yeah, have some berries. So I moved up onto that cliff spot, moving my crafty station and all that because I still wanted that base location, but I needed a safer area to start off with because those rexes be dangerous. Made myself a gate to start blocking the only way to this spot. Due to that rex attack yesterday, I had to make myself another smithy for the crafting station. Also made some fence supports that are placed next to the gate, but one side needed one more fence support though. I was a little thirsty after all this work, so I headed down to the water where I was nearly munched on by a terror bird, and then I stole from this beaver family that was living nearby. Felt bad, because these beavers are broke. They had no cementing pace. I finished that wall, and then this pretty pteranodon landed in my base and had these gorgeous pink wings. And I just had to knock it out and tame it. But it's another female, so I couldn't breed it with Iris, so it kind of just got left a soul ball for the whole series. Made myself a preserving bin for the crafting station, and then made a sickle to speed up fiber harvesting. Then I spent the rest of the day just getting resources, which I will not bore you with. Day 8, and I was finally able to grab my first purple loot drop, which had some okay loot. I also spotted this epic looking level 162 tech rex. Like, goddamn, this thing looks like a bloody Terminator. While I was collecting some resources, I was also collecting resources until my hatchet broke. No, I need to get this repaired soon as possible. But this means I was finally able to make my first behemoth gate 
and I placed it down at the base location to start planning the perimeter defense. I also placed the fence supports on both sides of the gate and then spotted myself a nice yellow drop which I had to just go and grab. This had some nice stuff in it. Then I went back to adding more to the fence and then this Rex rocked up outside my base walls and it had to be dealt with. Now an epic fight between the Rex and Floof has started. But in the end we were victorious because Floof a little beast. Then. I spent the rest of the day adding more to the fence line and spotted this level 174 female tech rex. That's a potential breeding pair near my base if I don't say myself. The following day was a hectic day. It started off with a yellow drop with a nice blueprint on it. Then we headed out for some Denonicus eggs. And I found myself my first lot of Denonicus quite close to base and there was two nests that I could spot. So I quickly swooped down and stole one of the eggs, but it was only a level 20, which kind of sucked. And then I swooped down to get the other egg while the Donarchus were distracted, and I was able to steal that egg, which was a level 50, which is a little bit better, but it's not what we want. I quickly dropped off those eggs at base before heading to the White Cliffs to hunt for more eggs. I spotted this one nest with a level 140 Denonicus nearby. I waited for it to be distracted and swooped down and stole the egg right out of the nest and it was a level 130 egg which is so nice. I found another nest spot. When I saw my opportunity I quickly snagged that egg right up and it was a level 85 which is alright. I found another nest but this wasn't worth stealing as it was a level 20 egg. So that was a kind of waste of my time. I spotted another two nests, but there was a pack of aloes near it, as well as the Denonicus, and this was just a death trap, man. That was just asking to die, so we had to nope straight out of there. I finally spotted another two nests, and on this cliff, I planned out my attack and managed to steal not just one egg, but both of the eggs with ease. They were level 50 and 85 eggs, which is okay, but I think there's enough egg stealing for one day and decided it was time to head back to base and call it a night. The following day I decided that I'm going to hatch my 138 egg and the 285 egg so I can get myself a fluffy raptor pack. After I set up some torches I got them eggs incubating and then when they hatched I managed to actually get twin females out of that 130 egg which is actually so good. So I ended up only raising up one of the level 85 eggs which was a male for that nice mate boost for my fluffy raptor pack. Called the females Fluff and Puff and the male Munch, yeah. That's some interesting names there. I got them all raised up and got a full imprint on all three and I went out on an epic killing spree with my new fluffy raptor pack which ended- I'm here. Let's go! Get- Get the Bronto in my pack! Oh wow, what level is this Bronto? But dear Bronto. When we took down this Bronto with ease, so much meat was obtained this day. Bronto no more. I started the next day by trying to open up this red drop but I wasn't high enough level. I had to be level 70. I swear red drops were 60 and up to open. Oh well, I did open this yellow drop instead, but this was definitely not worth the open. And if I'm being honest, I don't even know how many drops I'm going to open through this 100 days challenge. Can you keep count of it for me? Comment down below how many you think I do open, because I'm going to show them all that I have recorded. Then I spotted this max level mammoth, and this got me thinking about how having a mammoth will increase my resource grind up tenfold for wooden thatch. So I made a bunch of trank arrows and headed back out to go tame that 150, but somehow I couldn't find it anywhere. I don't know, it disappeared. But I had an interesting time trying to knock out this level 85 mammoth, which I ended up feeding some berries up its butt. While waiting, I also thought about getting my stone stonks up by getting myself a dodo, but it really just didn't go to plan as the one I found was already weak for fighting. I'm guessing this dodo is bugged out because he's not moving and I'm hitting for three, which means he would be in ball mode, but he's not in ball mode and confusion. The man finally tamed and I ended up calling him Manny. You know, Ice Age Manny. I started day 12 off with a dookie yellow drop and then I made myself a saddle for Manny before going out and collecting so much wood and thatch with him. There was only one problem with Manny, he can't fit through my bloody dino gateway. I did spot a dodic and then I checked his level before whipping this Argy's butt to the shadow realm. Then I wanted to try and trank that dodic but we were jumped by a tech raptor which we decimated swiftly. But during all that havoc the dodic kind of got hurt and then decided to hide in its shell again. And I waited for a bit, but gave up trying to tame this thing because I could not be bothered waiting for it to come out of the shell. So I decided we're going to get something else. We're going to go get Naji. So I went and made myself a trap and headed into the mountains where I spotted a level 140 Argy. She was beautiful. So I placed down that trap and tried to lure it in, but I failed to get her in. Like I did in the last 100 days. Like this trap really doesn't 
like me. So I did a little bit of a redesign, but I was jumped by Saber. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Calm down, man. And after dealing with the Saber, I managed to get her in. I started to trank her out, but she tore and flew off because she wasn't in the trap correctly, which was a bit of a bummer. Made myself some gunpowder and then made a long neck rifle and some bullets before I turned them into trank darts, which will come in handy for taming. Made myself a second forge to speed up that metal production, and then we knocked out that dodic, which happened to be level 20, which will do. In the early hours of the following day, that dodic finally tamed what I called it Sandshrew. Yes, I got that name right this time, unlike my last 100 days. God damn. I made Sandshrew a saddle and got to work harvesting some stone. Stonks going up, boy. Talking about stonks, have you liked the video? And have you hit that sub button? As we're on that road to 10k subs. I appreciate the boost. With the amount of resources I was getting now, I was able to place a second behemoth gate and continue placing more fence supports around the perimeter. I got this ascendant Lomitra saddle from this drop, which was cool. It's ascended, but I'm not gonna bloody tame myself a Lymetra. So useless. And I also got myself a nice pike blueprint, which is an upgrade, so that's always welcome. I ended off that day by adding walls to the perimeter fence. We started day 15 with two purple drops, which were okay for the loot. One thing I have noticed is the amount of adobe blueprints I get from drops over this 100 days is insane. There was this alpha Kana lurking around my base, but he dipped, so no worries there. I made even more trank does as I was getting ready to go get that 140RG again. I managed to get that 140 in the trap again, and we tranked her out. I went home and got myself some mutton from the base, which I don't remember getting as I didn't write it in my notes, so that's great. So I probably got it from the White Cliffs, since that's where I murk a bunch of overses throughout the 100 days, but oh well. Gave that money to her. While we're waiting for her to tame up, I collected another purple drop. And you can decide if this loot is good or not. Comment down below. We actually finally tamed and I kited her back to base. But we got that stupid glitch where the taming box and the tracking doesn't go away. Which is absolutely annoying. And so I had to quickly log off and then log back onto my world. So fun. I needed chitin or keratin to make her a saddle. So I went out on my Denonicus pack and started hunting anything that gives me keratin. But... But tragedy happened, because when we jumped in on this Rex and Stego fight, oh no, this is, oh no, this is alright. No floof! There was the T-Rex, but no, my poor floofy. Well, day 16, I kind of forgot to hit the record button at the start of the day, so you kind of lost a bit, but I did name the RG Starly, and gave her a saddle, and then we ended up just spending the rest of this day adding to the fence perimeter. On day 17, the perimeter wall was finally completed. And it wasn't the prettiest wall, but it was a functional one, and it means that we can safely build up our base now. I quickly clicked this yellow drop that had a good Denonica saddle, which I put on Fluff as she was the pack leader of my little fluffy raptor pack. But it's time to get more eggs. But first, we had to do a stop by and check on Diff and see how he's doing. Well, hello there, Diff. How's it going? Wait, you say, wait, you're saying you're doing fantastic, mate. That just sounds good. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going to get more Denonica 6. That's that's what we're doing out here. Uh, you've been holding the edit down here at the, uh... I don't know what you were to call this thing, the camp. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, you want to come to the new base part? Nah, you're staying here for now, right? I might pick you up and take you to a new base out soon. But right now, Diff, you are just here standing guard and doing good stuff, right? Okay, goodbye. Bye. Oh, that's not a free egg. Oh, now it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's not a free egg. You son of a gun. We ended up collecting a decent amount of eggs today, but there was one that stood out. It was this level 145, which is the highest egg we have gotten so far. At the end of the day, on my way back to base, I ended up stopping right next to the artifact of the destroyer, which isn't one we need for the beta bosses. It's actually used for the alpha, but I'll take it anyway. Plus free weapon skin. And at this time, I actually didn't know that this uh, artifact was used for the alpha and not the beta, kind of thought it was like Ragnarok where you need all the artifacts, but you don't, you only need three, which is great. But it wasn't until the following day that we actually returned to base. And then we did a lot of resource grinding, but there was one thing that was kind of tripping my mind. There was this tree in the middle of the area I was my base that just didn't want to get knocked down. 
you can actually walk straight through it, which is kind of odd. So I guess it's just kind of glitched there or it's not meant to be hit or anything. So that was a bit odd, but it does become a massive design point for the base and you'll see. And with that being said, we started working on the base foundations, just making that tree a centerpiece of the base. Also collected a purple drop to have a bit of a break from building, and it was alright, I guess. Then we went back to working on that centerpiece of the base for the rest of the day. Day 19 was even more base building. Like, literally, the whole day was base building except for this little moment where we took a break to get some crystal to make some water jars because I was over getting thirsty all the time but the rest of the day was just straight on hammering down and working on that base. But to have a break from all the building I was doing, I went on a little drop one where I collected a purple drop, then a red drop, then another red drop. And then the rest of the day was just working hard building up this base section. It's day 21 and we're still working on that goddamn centerpiece of the base, but I did get the basic shape of it done before I ran out of resources and had to spend the rest of the day grinding out resources. Ah, oh, that's how I feel about that. The following day, I started getting the layout of what will be my crafting room. Then, I added a bunch of large storage boxes to the centerpiece, as this was my storage room. Yes, all the storage. But there is this rock that is peeking into my crafting area, and I can't do anything about it because I can't hit it. It's kind of like the same thing as a tree, so oh well. Then, I spent the rest of the day adding some walls to the crafting room. I started the next day off with a yellow drop that had a Tyranodon setup, which is perfect to put on iris then i decided it's time to hatch that 145 egg but its stats were just not it like this is just dookie this is just not worth it so it's time to head out and get some more eggs and i start off with level 20 eggs and two back to level 15 eggs like what are these dookie eggs man then it happened we hit the jackpot what you got for me <gasps> 130 <laughs> no way yes that's a max level egg right there 130 egg boy 130 i also got two level 140 eggs very close by so then i decided to head back to where i snatched out that 150 egg because there was another nest there that i spotted but there was a problem with this nest these denonicus were camping like cod noobs like god damn come on oh, once i thought i had a chance to swoop down and snatch that egg i took it oh, oh no they weren't oh my god <laughs> frick was that a 140 that was another 150 <laughs> And while that is another 150 egg, plus a side of heart attack, I stopped to get another artifact of the destroyer, cause why not, and collected a yellow drop before getting back to base. The following day was a hatching them eggs kind of day, but there was this Bronto trying to have a peep at my eggs, the derpy bugger. Hashtag Brontos need a TLC, for sure. One of the eggs hatched me a male with decent mailing set and stamp set, and I'm going to use the house set from Fluff or Slash Puff since they're twins to get the base stats that I want. Then I swiftly collected this purple drop and started to move some of the crafting stuff from my temporary crafting spot. Also made myself a fabricator for that crafting room. But I did make myself a new smithy, a SS crafting station, and a feeding trough. Day 25 started with a red drop in the white cliffs, which had a rock golem saddle. And at that time I was like, do they even spawn on this map? Well, I find out later on. Then I spotted a level 90 Anki, and I think it's time we speed up that metal production. So I knocked him out and tamed him, got him back to base before naming him Spike. Yes, I'm a genius with the names. Then I made Spike a saddle and went on a mega metal run. The next day was really just a resource day and me starting on the Denonicus breeding room for the base. Day 27 and we started off with another purple drop, which I'm kind of getting annoyed with how dooky these drops have been for me so far. I did end up taming myself another moss shop, which we called Jerry the second, made Jerry the first, rest in peace. You need to make him a grey stone in the future. Then I bullied some beavers for their cementing pace. And then it was time to go on a hunt for some oil up in the snow biome, which I'm gonna need a lot of. But I was having like no luck finding any, but god damn is this snow biome beautiful. Also collected this purple drop to end off the day like I started it, with garbage. The following day I had to wait out the night before hunting for oil again. I did spot some more high level UDs. Which means more opportunity for a high level UD team. But then I spotted some oil rocks around this lake. Before we harvest them, I risked my life for this rare drop. And that's worth it. That's worth it. Ooh, 
Ooh, that was close. Yep, that was well worth the risk for that saddle blueprint. Now it's time to harvest up all that oil before I head back to base. When I was back at base, I moved my preserving bin to the crafting room. I split up all that oil, I collected and got to making some gasoline. Then I made myself a generator and some cables so I can start to set up my electrical system. Then I made some air cons and a sole terminal to add to the breeding room. Uh, so once again, I've got to click record on day 29 and yeah, so there's nothing here. So on to the next day, ah, uh, day 30, another milestone day achieved. And I finished off that breeding room. Now I only have the crafting room to finish off. But before I do that, I have to have my ND forge placed before I can finish the build. I got a male and female Donokers with the best stats from the parents that I wanted, which means we have our base pair. Also the other female there has exact same stats alrighty so it's time to work for mutations the following day started with metal on metal harvesting yes more metal stonks then a yellow drop that had a tapahara saddle which actually I kind of want to tame one I might actually end up going tame one I found some oil veins on this mountain by some obsidian that I was looking for guess I'm gonna have to make some oil pumps for it and then I went and collected this yellow drop and yes that's two oil pumps in this yellow drop. Like, what? I, I just found the oil veins and then they get the oil pumps? Like, how? Come on, excuse me. What is this? Is this some YouTuber luck or something? Okay. So I ended up placing down them oil pumps on the veins and when I got back to base, I got my first mutation. Yes, a health mutation, which is something I definitely wanted. So we're gonna chuck that into the breeding pool. The next day, I bully the beavers once again for their sweet, sweet cementing paste. Got myself a harpoon gun and some net projectiles as it's time to go hunting for Tapahara. But before we do, I have what we call a tactical pause and had to look online to find out where they actually spawn on this map, which is actually in the forest near me. So that's actually good. So it's time to hunt down for two because I kind of want to get a breeding pair so I can get a well imprinted Tapahara. I first collected this garbage yellow drop in the forest before spotting my first Tapahara, but it got spooked and I lost it. I didn't end up finding it, but it's only a level 15, so that's a straight up nope. Then I spotted another one, which was a level 20. Yes, that's another nope. This castle looks epic, and then I got my shit scared out of me by a bloody Kano. Whoa, <laughs> freaking Kano, calm. Shit, <laughs> Jesus. The following day started with some very disappointing drops, so I have kind of given up on that Tapahara hunt for the moment. Then it was getting more metal for that ND Forge, and then I went on a meat run to end of my day with the fluffy wrap the back, and then he ran into death with this bloody Alpha Rex just right in my face, like sheesh. Nope, 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 nope. Yet again, we got another day that I didn't record the start of, but I did go on that Tapahara hunt again, and that's a level 130 female. And it's time to attempt to tame this girl. Because she's floating around, I tried this risky play to spook her to get her somewhere where she can land. Which it worked. Then she landed. But I accidentally spooked her. And then she got spooked again by a raptor. But the chase ain't over yet. Before attempting to net gun her once again. But I failed and spooked her. But I was lucky to get one more chance. And then I went for that net projectile and it hit the tree. No. And she was spooked and I ended up losing her. It was a very sad day today. So I headed back to base in defeat for making a full ghillie suit for the next time I go on a Tapuhara hunt. Maybe third time the charm will actually happen. I did get the stand mutation, which is actually good for the Doricus, so into the breeding pool it goes. And then all that metal runs came in clutch as we finally got to make that ND forge. And we put all the rest of the metal that I had going in those refining forges into the ND forge and it started cooking up metal ingots. Let's go. The following day was all about building up that craft room, getting it finished. But it wasn't finished yet. Which on the following day, I got to the final stages of this part of the base. But before I finished it, I did get this double mutation on Denonicus, which is upping their health and food. And yeah, the food mutation is a bit dookie, but to get another Denonicus with a health mutation is kind of wishful thinking. So that one's going into the breeding pool. I did finish off the roof, but there is more to add to this part of the base, but that comes later. So you better keep watching. And then I made some grappling hooks as tomorrow we're heading to this cave that is meant to have some good drops plus an artifact, which can be easily obtained because there's nothing in the cave to actually attack you. So it's supposed to be an easy cave. On day 38, I chucked on a GPS onto the hotbar and headed to the hidden cave. I did spot two high level Rexes on the way to the cave. Maybe we need good Rex to run around to get those Apex drops that we're gonna need for the boss fight. 
I found the cave and well there was no drops and I'm guessing this is because I'm playing on single player and we all know how broken single player can be for drops and caves and all the other stuff so this was a bit of a bummer but I did grab the artifact of the crag which I actually don't need for the beta boss so that's a great so it's kind of a bit of a worthless attempt I do figure out later on what actual artifacts I do need so I went back to base and collected this purple drop and then I sadly got a shitty speed mutation which sucks I ain't gonna be using that so that's going into the delete pile but I did end up making two fridges and a grill for the crafting room so we can completely cool off all our food stuff and get cooking the following day started off with another red drop which I don't know how many bloody red drops I've actually collected during this 100 days but some of them were just dookie and then the rest of the day was one of those up in your resource stonks days good old resource days Ah, uh, day 40 and we finally made a chem bench and you know what that means heaps of spark powder narcotics and gunpowder woohoo i clicked this purple drop before going on the tapahara hunt round three hoping i can find that 130 again but today i figured out kind of what the artifacts i need after doing some research on the boss fight so there's actually three that we need and a bunch of apex drops we will get those and when it comes to actually defeating the beta boss i can end up making a tech saddle for the Tapahara, which I've never used before, which would be sick to make in a potential 200 days, which if you want that video, this needs to break 2k likes. So get like in the video boys. I snagged this yellow drop before spotting a level 15 Tapahara, which I'm pretty sure is the same one from the first round of hunting, so that was a bomber. Then I spotted this level 60, which is better, but it ain't that 130. So by the end of the day, I kind of gave up on the hunt again. The next day started by upping my ammo stocks and some trank darts, as we're going to need them for anything we tame in the next 59 days. Yes, we have 59 days to day 100. Holy hell. But today was time to start building up what will be the dual towers of the base. Yes, another part of the base is getting built. And this will connect this bottom area to the little top area that we use as a little crafting temporary place which is going to be sick. But I got distracted on the build by this red drop and then this purple drop. And then we got back to building the first of the dual towers for the rest of the day. Continued working on that first tower on the following day until I drained all my resources. I had to spend the rest of the day grinding more resources for building these epic towers. On day 43, the tower build continued with me getting the stairwell inside going up to the top of the tower. I got most of it done today. There's also going to be this little bridge walkway thing going from the top of the first tower to the bottom of the second tower and it's going to be how I'm going to connect the two. The next day was all about finishing off that first tower by making the top of the tower and adding some additional details to the side. Yes, we're going to get snazzy with it. And then I started working on the walkway that is going to connect the two towers. The following day, there was this Rex trying to get into the base and it happened to be a high level. So I decided that we we're going to knock him out today. So by playing ring around the bloody Rex while on fluff, we knocked him out. Also Merc this Carnif for getting too goddamn close. Frick off. And then I fed this Rex some juicy sheep butt. Yes, juicy. He finally tamed, but there was trouble nearby, and we had to blast like Team Rocket back to base. And I named him Uta, and his stats are pretty good too. Made my new friend a saddle so we can go on a stomp and munch together. End the day off with another stam mutation for my Denonicus line, which is nice. Day 46 was just one of them days where I started it off by collecting drops, hoping I could get something good to use. Then did some tower building and spotted a red drop that was not worth my time to go get. Decided to say hi to Diff again. Hey Diff, how's it going, mate? You got a Willy Wino friend here. What level is this guy? 95. She's a big boy. She hasn't attacked the base on it? No. You've been doing good down here. Alrighty, Diff. I think I think it's time we take you back to base. I continued on that tower ball before the sign that the top of the first tower was gonna to be Diff's new home. His place that he will be for the rest of the hundred days. The next day I made this pump action shotgun from a blueprint that I've collected from one of the many drops I've collected over this 100 days. And it was now time to prep for the spider cave so I can take down that broodmother and get some artifacts. I got another half mutation for my Denonicus line which is nice. I collected this rare drop before building the beavers for this silica pearls as I needed to make myself some scuba gear which I've been using to help myself take no damage from the gas in the spider cave. And now it's time to raise up a new Denonicus pack which I named the four Denonicus, Naruto, Hinata, Sakura, 
and Sasuke. While I was waiting between the imprints, I wanted to make their four saddles from the journeyman blueprint I have, but I didn't have enough fiber, so we had to go on a fiber run during my imprints. In the early hours of the next day, they all finally grew up, and I managed to get a full imprint on all four of them. Finally got all the saddles made, and fed them a bunch of babies, but it doesn't get them much XP, so maybe we need to get a female Rex so I can get some Rex baby XP. And then we went on a late night Bronto destruction to end up the day. Day 49 was all about levering the ninja pack, but I didn't record the whole day as you can see it by it being night time. Um, well, spider cave tomorrow. While we were getting prepped to leave for the spider cave on day 50, I made a cooking pot so I can make myself some med brews. Also added the Rex bone helmet skin to my ghillie suit. Now we're getting that Vena look going. Now it's time to fly over to the brew mother lair that is outside the entrance of the spider cave. We made it there and I had to lead the ninja pack out and also brought the fluffy raptor pack as I needed to make sure this brew mother died. Holy damage. Which to be honest we shredded through her like nothing. I didn't think it was going to be this easy. But it's now time to enter the cave and I was only taking the ninja pack. I left the fluffy pack outside. The cave was just a lot of death. Like, look at all these death notifications on my screen. Like, sheesh! Holy death, holy death, holy death. <laughs> my screen is just covered in death. And there was a shit ton of leeches which is great. By the time I was done killing everything in this part of the cave and removing the leeches, it was the next day. I got to this natural bridge in the cave that you have to jump across because there's a hole, so I only took Sasuke with me. And in here is where the artifact of the strong resides and there's nothing in here to like attack you, so that's all good. And that is one of the three artifacts we're gonna need for the beta boss fight. Then I dropped down from the bridge with the whole ninja pack with me go get the next artifact. There was also this red drop in this area of the cave, which was the only cave drop I actually get during this 100 days. I don't do much caving, and to be honest, it wasn't that great. This room had a lot of danger, so we had to murk everything before I could collect the artifact of the immune, which means I only need one more artifact for the boss fight. I climbed my way back up the cliff side to that bridge we dropped down from, and got my ass out of that cave. And started the long fly back to base, which included this purple drop. <laughs> Ascended shotgun. Well, I guess it's now time to get back to work on those dual towers. And we got a nice rare drop in the morning, then a second rare drop with a ring, which had a good rig saddle, which is better than the one I already had on Uta, so I guess he's getting an upgrade again. Then I started working on the foundation of the second tower, which I did get done. Then I got to working on finishing up that walkway between the towers and at the end of the night I spotted another red drop and I had to head towards it. I finally got to that drop on the following day but it was on top of a Danonicus nest. And there's a bloody lot of them. So after kiting them all off the cliff I collected their drop and some of their eggs. Ha, <laughs> suckers. Then I spent most of the day collecting resources before I finished off the walkway which is looking very sweet. I started day 54 with a yellow drop before heading out on that Tapahara hunt round stinking four. We clicked this yellow drop and then I noticed I forgot my mutton so I'm gonna have to kill something for some prime meat. And then while we're trying to look around for that 130 I did something so stupid and pressed E. Yes, I jumped off my mount midair so I fell down like a bloody idiot but luckily it wasn't too high and didn't take too much fall damage. For frick's sake man. I did spot this level 25 which I decided to try and murk but I failed to kill it and it got away. Uh, the hunt continues into the next day as I'm not leaving this forest until I have myself a tap of heart. I collected this yellow drop before spotting a level 45 tappy which I lost where it went after I got spooked. Then I collected some purple drops before spotting this level 85 tap of heart, and I decided I'm going to try and tame this one. I nearly lost her after she got spooked by something in the trench the next day, and then I accidentally spooked her myself. So while I was waiting patiently for her to land, but she wasn't going to, so it was time to do a tactical spook, which worked wonders, and I managed to get her to land up on this cliff where nothing would be able to attack her, which is perfect. So I netted her, and shot her once in the head, and she was out cold. Sleep tight. Gave her some prime meat and waited for her to tame. Once she tamed, I caught her Aurora and headed back to base. Gave her that Mastercraft saddle and went on our maiden flight together. I love these things. On day 57, I spotted this high level female Rex and I think it's time to get Uta a mate. He's a bit lonely at the moment. So I got on Sasuke and knocked her out the same way I knocked out Uta. 
Then I marked a level 90 friend that was nearby and fed the prime meat from her to the high level female. Hmm, great. While waiting for her to tame up, I did some more work on the towers. She finally tamed, she had some good stats. So I got her to mating with Uta and maybe we will get a pair of Rexes for the boss fight. Hmm. The following day I made a hitching post for my Rexes so I can have them on Wonder and they can breed whenever I'm out of render range. Click this yellow drop before hatching my first Rex egg which didn't have the stats I wanted but I'll keep it for when raising my army for the boss fight. Then we got back to working on that tower for the rest of the day after I collected another yellow drop. On the next day I got a Rex with the best stats. And this one will be my meat running demon. And I called him Carnage, as that's what he's going to cause. I added some extra detail to the first tower between the imprints, and also started work on the second tower. The next day I collected yet another yellow drop that was not worth my time before getting the final imprint on Carnage. Then I collected this red drop before he was fully grown up. Gave him a nice Rex baby buffet and gained 44 levels, which is insane. Then I held him up a bit by stuffing meat down his throat even though he was full. What a great parent I am. Then Carnage happened. Yes, nothing was living in his chaos. He was destroying everything, ate everything, munched everything, just um. Day 61 was just one of those resource days. So nothing really interesting happened today. The following day I got a base pair of Rexes, so I guess I'm gonna be doing some Rex mutations. Let's go. Also I wanted at least 10 baby Rexes per creature I'm going to be taking into the boss arena which means about 200 Rex babies. They better get maiden. I then headed out into the snow as I needed more oil. There was so many wolves near the oil nose, I had to wipe out a few. Then while I was having some oil, I was attacked, but there was nothing we couldn't handle. Once I collected a bucket load of oil, it was time to leave. I collected this red drop on the way back home. For all that oil I collected, I finally had enough to make myself a grinder on day 63, which means all that useless junk I've collected from drops now it has a purpose, yes, to be grinded down for their resources. <laughs> suckers. Also made myself an industrial cooker, which will come in handy for making more med brews and any soups and maybe some kibble, if I ever make kibble. Then I collected three drops that didn't have anything I wanted, but I ended up grinding all of that loot, so I guess it was worth it now. Then I added more stuff to the towers. The next day was basically all building up the second towers, so, like so much work. My poor goddamn hands from all this construction was rewarded by a melee mutation. Into the breeding pool that goes. Then back to building before giving Pa her new home on the second tower. Yes, this is where she's gonna be. My alarm system's gonna be in the second tower. We start the next day with a yellow drop that had a saddle upgrade for Aurora. Let's go! Probably should try and find her a mate so I can get an imprinted one. Then I spent the rest of the day just gathering resources, so let's go on to the next one. Now today it's time to finish off this tower. I needed my raw room to be built and it's part of this tower and you thought I wasn't gonna have a war room. I did get this health mutation on the Rexes, which is good. Well, I didn't get the build fully finished today, but I did get this table and chair for the war room place so that's nice now we've got a place to sit i finished off the roof of the second tower on the following day and then it was time to add light to the place in the form of wall torches and once all the torches were placed i enjoyed the view that i had from the tower then it was time for our first war room meeting so Josie, what else do we need to do before we get to the boss battle we need an auto oh yeah that's right for the artifact the artifact that we need to get from the snow Last artifact we need for the beta boss. A Yudi? Yeah, I agree. A Yudi Ernest will help out. Even a dad? You think he had dad on? Not. Okay, get a dad on as well. And you're thinking we need more mutations on the uh, Denonicus as well, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Like the wall room, though, eh? It does. It does need a wall map behind us. I start the next day off with a yellow drop and then a red drop. And now I think it's time that I show off the base, MTV Crib style. Well, kinda. Yes, welcome to MTV Cribs Arc Edition. And this is my crib of Algera. Beautiful map. Um, we better head off before uh, that Rex decides to come over and stomp on us. You see him over there? Yeah. So we better go. Follow me. Inside we go. And here's the courtyard. This is where my Rexes like to stand and chill out. We've got my Denonicus, little the fluffy army here. We got the ninja squad over here. Got some breeding rexes doing doing really well. Got Aurora here. We're not here to see the teams, are we? Josie. Are we? Yeah. We're here to see the crib. Now here we go. This is my crib. Now you see there's two parts of this crib. First we got the kinda 
my crafting station, my garage, if you want to say. Kind of like where I do all my work. And in the center, we have my storage room where I can find all my goodies, including my chainsaws, which are in this chest here. No, that's my weapons chest. Don't need looking at my my chainsaw chest. Look at that, three solid chainsaws. Absolutely insane. Now we go over here, and this is my breeding room for my Denonicus army. They're gonna be pretty good. It's a pretty good area. Looks pretty nice. Looks pretty beautiful. Does the trick. Now we go to the other end, which is the main crafting hub, which has my industrial forge. Has everything inside nice and clean build everything the only thing that doesn't work is the industrial cooker because i haven't laid the pipes yet because i'm lazy should do it but it is what it is and then we head out the back got my flyers chilling out here and then we got the towers now we've got our dual tower system here this i don't know I, i'm gonna call these towers something but i think this is like you know, my horizon towers that's what i'm calling them, the horizon towers and we enter our first tower here this one it's pretty simple Kind of just the bottom floor is pretty much nothing it's just an empty area but we head up our rampway staircase here this just takes us all the way to the top but you can look out you can look out the here look look out here look pretty get a nice little view here got a little little balcony here which i should put a pot plant on there got like some greenery growing i don't know should be nice and keep on going up and we get to the top and you meet diff who chills at the top up here it's got a pretty nice view from the first tower here can see all around the lawn the landscapes can check out anything then if we go out the back there's a bridge here so we enter our little bridgeway which connects the two horizon towers to get and then we get to this one so let's just go out the courtyard here and this is the back there's just a back gateway here kind of protects the area from any dinos at the moment it's not the, not the best wall but it's like the first thing i ever placed down but here we go look at this this tower is absolutely amazing but we're gonna head on up you walk up this way the bottom floor yet again is not much in it but those are these little this little cubby hole here play hide and seek in here maybe like pretty good hiding spot isn't it thing you think no okay we'll continue on up and let's go up our staircase so the staircase takes us up to what would be the second floor because this thing this tower has actually multiple floors to it our second floor is basically the watchtower part of this tower and our parasol power here sits up here and keeps an eye on everyone alarms off of any danger but then you climb up this ladder here and whoop and this is the war room now there is a few things missing up here whoop, what the hell pa's head was hitting me through the floor okay <laughs> now if we sit down here we kind of chill here we chill little spots where we discuss our plans on how to take down the boss that was that uh, okay <laughs> um yeah other than that you know what the wall room is for but let's get to the top the top of the tower the viewpoint the advantage point just look at these views man look at them absolutely stunning you kind of can't see to the sky because of the overhang this is this could be a, this is like a little sniper tower man if i'm up here with my, my snipe i can snipe some people down with it i had some actual ammo on me i'd probably show you what it does but i ain't gonna do that but that is my crib of Algaro. Fuck off, I want to look out the window. Beautiful. Now back to your regular scheduled program. Well, after that showcase, it's time we get an otter. So let the hunt begin. But I didn't actually find a single bloody one today. And it was night time, so the hunt will continue tomorrow. Ah, uh, the funny number. We can all appreciate the number 69. And my hunt for a furry friend continued today with a yellow drop. And then heading into the snow to see if we can find ourselves one in the snow. This area near Blue Orb looks kind of sick, but there also can be an otter near here, which there was. So I quickly shotgunned this fish to the Shadow Realm and fed it to the otter, which tamed it. I called her Fizzle, as that's kind of my name for my otters. And on my way back home, I spotted this event colored beauty, which is gorgeous, and it was a level 145 which I'm going to have to come back and tame. I collected this rare drop, and then I tried to collect this bloody purple drop, but I was scared away due to the Microraptors. Frick them, man, they gave me nightmares. Day 17, and we're getting closer to our final goal, but then an argument happened between Josie and Fizzle in the war room. Time to start this meeting about the war against the Forsaken Oasis. All right, so we you been using Denonicus? Hey, what? Yep, yep. Still need a UD, yes, we're going to get a UD. That's today's plan. Are you guys fighting? Seriously, stop it. 
Well, after that, I made a trap for the Yudi and headed back into the snow. I spot that 145 again with a level 100 next to him, which means mating pair there, but I wanted to grab the final artifact that I needed for the boss fight first, which was in this cave below Blue Orb and is an easy, easy grab. So I headed back to the place where that Yudi was and placed the trap down just to only find out that it was marked by the wolves. And the level 100 has just ran off, so that's great. So we're gonna pick that trap back up for another day. A hunt for another high level UD continued into the next day, and then I spotted myself another 145 UD. Let's go. I didn't bother with the trap this time though. I just made him trap himself into this rock because he couldn't get me up on this cliff where I was able to just pout trank darts into his head and knocked him out. But I had to kill this Pelovia before I could actually feed him. And then this other UD which I managed to nick gun in the water from range. Like, sheesh, that's a shot and a half. Oh, <laughs> oh no way I just did that. <laughs> I just freaking netted him from here. Drown, you dumbass, drown. And I managed to kill him too. So I stuffed some mutton into that UD and tamed him. Called him Sir Screamer and headed back to base. Day 72 and it's hunting time. I needed to get the rest of the Apex shots for the boss fight tribute which is like eight Sarko skins, 10 Aloe Brains, some RG Talons, and I needed like one more Titanic Boa Venom, and I had the rest already. So we stomped our way down to the swamp, where I murked a Sarko, and then got leeched before murking two Sarkos. Then murked a snake, which didn't give me bloody Venom, the gritty bastard. Then I killed even more Sarkos, before being leeched again. Freaking leeches, hate them. I hate the swamp, man. Hate it. Shrek would be laughing at me in his toilet if he saw this shit. But after all that stomping, I did manage to get all the Sarko skins and some Titanobo of Venom. And then I made a saddle for Sir Screamer and added a map to the war room to end off the day. The next day, I started off a Rex buffet for Sir Screamer. And then it was time to mark a bunch of aloes over in the White Cliffs. No aloe was safe. By the end of the day, I've gotten all the aloe brains I needed. The following day started off with a red drop and then a melee mutation for the breeding pool. And now I think it's time that I started to work on the pipe system so I can actually use my industrial cooker, which I did finish it off today. Then I collected a yellow drop at the end of the day as well. 25 days left and we're still collecting drops hoping for some better gear. Frick these drops suck. And then I started grinding resources so I can make myself a greenhouse. I think it's time I got some props going. And the end of the day with two red drops of garbage. I started the next day by building this walkway around the crafting room. So one, I can move my dinos around the base safely. And two, the greenhouse is going to be connected to this walkway. Yes, it's going to be hanging over that cliff. Because why not? I finished the walkway and added all them nice details. And then we started working on the layout of the greenhouse to end off that day. The greenhouse build continued into the next day with me adding pillars to make sure it was stable and safe. And then I started working on the greenhouse walls and all that kind of stuff to give that a good greenhouse effect. But I ran out of crystal, so we're gonna have to go get some more, which I did for the rest of the day. So let's skip, let's skip next day. Next, next, next day, cut them, hurry up. I finally finished the greenhouse building on day 78 and got to placing some compost bins and then added some seamless crop plots. But I did not have enough resources to cover the whole area I wanted for crop plots. So we collected the yellow job and then red job before I went and grinded resources so I can make them crop plots tomorrow. So on the following day, I got all the crop plots placed and changed all their styles so it was actually seamless. It was actually looking really nice. Then I got the pipes done so all the crops were irrigated. Then I went on a dung beetle hunt. But the only spot on this goddamn map they spawn is in the wyvern trench in the snow. And after I spotted a bunch of wyverns, I kind of gave up on the idea of owning a bloody dung beetle and... Frick that, no way. On day 80, I finally made it back to base and in defeat, I was like, okay, the only way I'm getting fur easily as with some pooping piggies. But I didn't just tame one piggy. No, I tamed bloody five of these pooping piggies. And then I decided to head back to base after doing that. I spot this decent level sticker that I decided to knock out, but I did a dum-dum and shot it while it was knocked out since I didn't know because of the neck gun projector on it, which ruined its taming effectiveness a bit. But it's just getting fed for berries and it's just gonna be taming for berries and getting all the berries, so meh, wasn't too worried. Then I named all the piggies. We got Mr. Poop, Miss Poop, Poopy, Poopet, and Poope. Then I made it rain goddamn poop and filled up my compost bins. And on the next day, I accidentally ate some fur. Luckily, it doesn't kill you like organic polymer. <laughs> Idiot. And then I placed a bunch of fur and poop into the crop plots and put some seeds in there, you know. But it's time to hunt for a date on in the snow, which we, I will find out that they actually don't spawn in the snow. 
idiot. I collected a couple of rare drops during my hunt and spotted this 150 UD, but it's in a really shit spot, so I ain't gonna worry about that. But as I said, there were no Daodons in the snow. So I stopped on this rock and did a tactical pause and checked online where they actually spawned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't spawn here in the snow, they're actually close to the snow. So, nice one, dumbass. So on day 82, I headed to where the dead on spawn and spotted a bunch. I did spot this level 145, which was perfect level to start with. But I checked around a little bit more to see if there's any other high levels, but didn't find any. So I snagged her up from a fight with a bloody Calicotherium and knocked her out cold. Feeding her some mutton. She tamed and I called her babe. I did realize on the way back to base that the Steko was in stasis and not taming. So I had to fly over her to get her to actually tame. So that's great. I got back to base and then the crops are starting to look really good. And then the Steko finally tamed and I called her sleepy and made her a saddle. Following day, we had another war room talk. <sighs> 17 days until war. Well, it's actually less than that. It's about 16 days into war at the Forsaken Oasis. I don't think there's anything else we can do right right now, isn't there, Josie? Yeah. Even though that 150 UD was tempting. Yes, I was an imprinted one. I don't think we're gonna go tamer. Maybe in the 200 days. Break that light goal. Just resources, getting soups, getting everything ready. Maybe getting some flak army thing. Just make some primitive one, because I can't get lucky. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then a couple of days, we'll start breeding up the army. Raising the army. Of Denonicus, couple Rixes, bring the dad on and Sir Screamer, babe and Sir Screamer. Should be good. Should be good. And then I went on a sleepy berry run. Let's go. Also went on a meat run with Carnage as I'm going to need a lot to have babe for passive healing and the boss and all my other army minions need to be fed. Decided to give babe a Rex buffet, but Sasuke and the bloody ninja pack decided to steal a bunch of the food, the cheeky buggers. And then I got the perfect double mutation. Yes, a mutation that had health and melee. Let's go. Day 84 started with three yellow drops in a row, but they're all bloody garbage. I decided on making all the Denonica saddles that I needed for the boss arena. And I also got the Rex pair of babies ready to raise. Now from day 85 to 88, it was all about raising up this army of Denonicus and the two Rexes. Making sure I got full imprints and that I had an even amount of male and female Denonicus. And by day 88 I had the whole army raised up with full imprints and started that power leveling process. So on day 89 I started using Liss our Lystra as a way to boost the amount of XP by giving her pats. She bloody loved it. And it's also where I noticed that the Denonicus don't get as much XP as like the Rexes do. Or any other dino. So that's kind of odd. I didn't know that. So, great. Uh, 10 days left. We are on the final stretch. And it's time to name my army. Now, I named the two Rexes after my first two channel members. Being Slazy and Omno. And then the Denonicus were named after the first 16 comments on my last 100 days video. Which I appreciate the goddamn support everyone has been giving the channel recently. It means a bloody lot to me and I appreciate it so much. Then... I went on an Ovis killing spree as I wanted as much cooked lamb for babe. Also, got my shit scared out of me because of this bloody rock golem. Fuck me, I hate these guys. The following day, I finally returned to base and got to cooking all that mutton. And did some more healing and more power levels until I ran out of Rex babies. I had a discussion in the war room to start off day 92 about the levels, man. Now it's time. We need a bit of a discussion here, Josie, right? My war chief. Yeah, the Denonicus might be a bit of an issue with them not all hitting 10k health. We can't get enough baby Rexes in time to all raise them up the little cheap way with the baby Rexes. Yeah, yeah, you agree. So you're thinking what I'm thinking? We uh, take them out for a bit of a run and just try and get as many levels before day 99? Yep. Alrighty. Then we went out with a pack of four of the Denonicus to hopefully get some levels by killing things, including this Alpha Rex. Next day I took out a different group and went out on a murder spree, but this isn't giving me much levels. I nearly could have died when the Stego Stam drained me off my Denonicus, but they had my back, and then I tried to fight the Super Turkey, but I bloody gave up on that because I have no time for their bullshit. On day 94 I decided to stop doing these level runs as they were just very inefficient, and went back to the baby XP leveling, and using all the babies I had, which included the Denonicuses. So on the next day I ran out of all the babies I had, so while waiting for more to hatch, I made this little area at the green obelisk, 
I hold my artifacts and apex drops and also had like a little uh, salt terminal there to put my dinos afterwards. I also made some stimulant because I wanted to make some Kallian soup just in case I needed it for the boss arena. The following day was just more power leveling and making sure everyone had meat on them for the boss fight. Babe had bloody tons. The greedy pig but she needed it on day 97 i did a few more power levels and then i added a feeding trough to the obelisk so once i got the army down there they don't drain into their boss supplies and then we had our final war room meeting well 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 tomorrow's the day we head down and take our dinos to the obelisk and then the day after we enter the arena we're a little nervous here josie you think i've got it though yeah just nervous as Denonicus says I ain't gonna be able to do enough with the levels they got. Only two so far got 40 levels onto their base raise level, which is just, I don't know, I don't think it's enough. The Rexes will hopefully take the brunt of the damage, so those Denonicus can deal as much bleed damage as possible. I think the plan is to take the Dragon down first, then the Manticore, and then the Megapithecus. Agree with that? Yes, 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 I do agree not to aggro that stupid monkey. Ugh. This has been a journey. Well, Josie, this will be the last time I'll probably be in here before the fight. And if I don't see you again afterwards, I appreciate you. And this is goodbye until I come back. If I come back. And then I just admired what I have built over these 100 days. <sighs> what a beautiful sight. Today was the day I'm going to march my army to the boss arena. I decided to take the army down in groups of five. And had Aurora placed in a soul trap so I could fly back and forth between the obelisk and my base. The first group down had a massive fight before I got to the obelisk. Which is okay. The second group got stuck on some rocks which is <sighs> great. Then the third group had no problems at all getting to the obelisk. They were fine. And then the final group had to molly up this bloody tickle chicken before we got to the obelisk. I realized I forgot to make the soups, so I had to head back to base to make some of them. And then I lined everyone up. Once it was the morning of day 99, it was time to enter the boss arena. And while the time was going down, I noticed I still had fizzle on my back, so I had to quickly yeet her off my back before the timer dropped. God damn it. But now it's boss fight time. Jesus, we did a lot with that one attack. Oh god, the poison. Where's the 23 damage coming from? What the hell? That's the dragon gone. Damn, son. Now let's hope this manticore gets done. Get up. Alrighty, alrighty, okay, the manticore's taking a decent amount of damage. Just watch out for the... Uh, the monkey. I don't want to aggro the monkey yet. I don't want to... Oh, monkey's now aggroed. Okay. Okay, we're just going to have to kill the monkey now. Get in there. Kill the monkey. Oh, the dragon's in the way. 
The dragon's dead bodies in the way. Oh my god. Jesus, I might not. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Then we got the manticore landing down as well. Okay. This is not what we wanted to happen. Because half my bloody army is underneath the freaking. Ay, ay, ay. I can't. The dragon's dead bodies in the way. What the hell, bro? Okay. We're just going to let them go. We're just going to have to let them do their thing. I think we're going to lose a couple of guys. Mm. Oh, there goes. There goes. To oh, sorry, Joshua. Sorry, Zip. Oh, no. There's a couple of Donaticas down. The Manticore does so much. I can't actually get over to help them. Uh, well, the Megapithecus is gone, nearly. Okay, let's see if we get a couple more in there. Yeah, let's go. We're just gonna walk over the dragon's dead body. There we go. More in there, more in there. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Shred. Shred. Shred the magical. This is all we got left. There's a couple that are stuck, but it's alright. Let's keep Kara drawing. Oh my. Alright. Watch out for the poison. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no, oh no, oh, oh god. Move this way. Go away. Oh, the poison. The poison gas. Watch out for the gas. Oh, he just landed right behind me. God damn. Ow. Alright, let's get... Oh, God, no. That was a lot of damage. Go, guys. Go, guys. Go. Probably could have done the alpha. Ah! Oh, my God. Oh, Justin, no. No. No, Justin! No! This manticore is doing all the damage. Oh, you guys are all over the place. Come on, he's nearly dead. He's nearly gone. He's nearly gone. One more hit. Go get him. Go get him. Go get him! I. He chickened off, man. He chickened off. Oh, oh, oh. Let's get the roar in there. Courage roar. Go! Go, my... Go, my pretties! Oh, we got it! We did it! Yeah! The beta. Forsaken Oasis or whatever. For, is it the Forsaken Oasis? This area has been done. We got we got the Manticore Shield skin. The chess piece? Oh, yeah, yeah. Got our trophies. Got our element. Not bad. And we did it. Even though we lost some Dononicuses in the battle, we won the goddamn battle. And when leaving the boss arena, we were attacked and there was a big mess happened. Ah, oh, goddamn. But then I headed back to base and placed some Greystone Downs for the Lost Souls. And then I shot three bullets out of my longing rifle to show my respect. Let's get some F to pay respects in the comments for the Fallen Souls of the 100 Day series. We did it. We survived 100 days and built an epic base. God damn it, man. Whew. Had some close calls, but we did it. Hope you guys all enjoyed this epic adventure. And if you want me to continue this world for like a 200 days video, remember to like the video as if we do break 2,000 likes, I'll do one. And here's a little uh, very extreme goal. If we break 10,000 likes, I will do a 1,000 days video on this map. We'll see what we can build and tame if we do that. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed your time. And make sure to go check out all my other content. But for now, I will be leaving you. Peace out.